I know step parents listening have such a heart for their step kids and they want good things, but we get stuck in these emotions that just keep us going round and round and end up leaving us right where we don't want to be. The truth is we want the relationship to turn around and to improve, but unfortunately, a step parent who isn't able to rise above the difficulty in the moment and regulate their own emotions, they're typically going to sabotage themselves unintentionally, Mm -hmm. and then the result is pain and distance in the relationship with the stepchild. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds. Understanding the kids' perspective. Romance and partnership. Parenting with great teamwork. And yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Hey, welcome. It's so good to have you here today, and we're excited to spend yet another episode with you. Mm -hmm. And you know, if the show's been bringing you value, I want to invite you to maybe share it out to your social media, out to Facebook, out to Instagram. And let your friends know that it's Mm -hmm. been bringing some value for you because chances are somebody in your friend group is probably living in a blended family uh, dynamic as well. And so maybe that would help them out. So we encourage you to do that. And while you're at it, maybe leave us a star rating or review over on Apple Podcasts Mm -hmm. or Spotify. We would so love to hear from you. But let's dive into what we want to talk about today. Right. You know, recently we've been talking quite a bit about step parenting here on the show, Mm -hmm. which is a topic that can often be very complex and emotionally charged, right? And we hear from broken hearted step parents all the time who have either given up or Mm -hmm. they're on the verge of giving up and they're struggling to believe that they'll ever have a reasonable relationship with their stepchild. Yeah. They feel beat up and beaten down and exhausted, frustrated, angry, confused, and defeated. That sounds fun. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. And of course, the pain and the challenging dynamics within their home has caused conflict and had a negative impact on their marriage, Mm. which can lead to crisis for the whole blended family. These step parents feel like they're in over their heads. Mm. They feel that stranded stranger dynamic really intensely, like they're on the outside, even in their own home. Mm. They feel stuck. They can no longer tolerate the hurt and the rejection they're experiencing on a daily basis. And sadly, they lost hope. Yeah. And as you're listening to that, I honestly hope that Kim did not just describe you, but If that's where you're at as a step parent, we want you to know that there is hope. We know how hard step parenting can be, but we also know that there are some things that you can do to move forward. And we encourage you to find some support and do what it takes to get unstuck and stay invested in your own blended family. That's right. And today we're going to offer some helpful strategies to get you started, Mm -hmm. whether you feel like you're in over your head and you're ready to give up or if you're simply struggling with tension in your relationship with your stepchildren Mm. and you haven't yet been accepted, right? That can be a tough place. But this episode is for every step parent Mm. and also for you bio parents, Mm. because you'll need to work together as a team to create healthy bonds and navigate forward in leading your blended family. Mm Mm-hmm. You've really got to be united as a couple when it comes to making step parenting successful. It takes both of you. Absolutely. That's right. So let's try to discover some practical ways to approach the pain of rejection that many step Mm -hmm. parents feel and try to hold on to some hope that step relationships can improve. Right. And so a great starting point for that is to consider how you might remove the pressure and persevere with a healthy perspective. So back in episode 157, we got to interview Brenda, Tiffany, and Stacy, three seasoned stepmoms. Mm-hmm. And Tiffany shared how in the beginning of her journey, shortly after she and Brian were married, she experienced a lot of pressure around her role in the family. 
And some of that came from Brian, who really wanted his kids to bond quickly with Tiffany and for her to become that motherly figure in their home. But some of it might have also come from simply not understanding what her role should be. So she bought into this belief that things needed to happen quickly. She should establish herself as an authority in the home and somehow make loving bonds happen with Brian's kids right away, right? Mm -hmm. She felt the pressure. She allowed that pressure to dictate how she showed up with her stepkids. Boy, that's a really tough position to be in. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to relational dynamics, you know, most of us don't do very well under pressure. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) We might attempt to push our way in at a pace that isn't comfortable for the kids Mm. or just assume that the kids should accept that we now have authority over them and should be embraced with open arms. Mm -hmm. But this is where things tend to backfire on a step parent. Mm. Unfortunately, that loving relationship you're experiencing with your spouse, Mm. their parent, it does not automatically extend to their love and acceptance of you. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be great if it did. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And each child in a blended family is their own unique person with individual personalities, preferences, perspectives, and different levels of comfort and discomfort. So pushing your way in without considering all these unique aspects about the children could damage a child's opinion of you and cause the kids to push back or even reject you. Yeah. So a step parent, they need to be really careful here. Oh, for sure. Because a step parent who's feeling pressure to move a relationship quickly to a place where the child isn't ready to go, mm. is actually going to end up pushing that child away, which is the opposite of what they really want. Right. So we've got to be able to release that pressure valve and learn to relax and just be okay with where things are right now. You see, accepting where the relationship currently is while not losing hope that it will grow will set you up for a healthier mindset as you navigate daily interactions. It's best to let each child set the pace in their relationship with a step parent and for the relationship to grow naturally. So we want to allow a child time to get to know you and to give them the space that they need to feel comfortable with you. And if you're feeling some pressure from your spouse, you might need to help them understand that applying that pressure isn't an approach that leads to healthy bonding. Mm. Or if you're putting that pressure on yourself, or maybe the culture around you is putting that pressure, Mm. maybe you need to remind yourself that pressure isn't an approach that leads to healthy bonding. It's not helpful. So we're going to talk about some effective ways to grow healthy bonds in just a few minutes, but releasing the pressure doesn't necessarily mean you just sit back and do nothing. That's not at all what we're saying. We're simply saying that added pressure is not helpful. You can't show up well under pressure and your stepkids really aren't going to want to receive you very well if you're applying pressure or added expectation that they just aren't ready for. What if you could experience a community that's all about healthy support guidance and practical strategies that help you thrive in your blended family well now you can blending together is a supportive community for blended family couples just like you Mm -hmm. we've educated and supported hundreds of couples navigating the unique challenges of blending a family now we're inviting you to join our community and experience the transformation that awaits you but you'll need to act fast because we're getting started soon. Mm -hmm. Blending together is not just another community. It's a place where you'll find practical real life strategies for building unity as a couple and creating more connection as a family, experiencing partnership in parenting and even dealing with that difficult ex. Blending together is a safe growth focused space where you get to connect with us and maybe more importantly, with other blended family couples who truly understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Along the way, you'll discover practical tools, guidance, and hope that empower you to find a future full of confidence and connection. When you join Blending Together, you'll get to hop into a variety of resources like access to our private Facebook group and online learning platform, monthly coaching meetings, monthly Q&As, and you'll even get to vote on the content for our monthly workshops. Mm -hmm. Blending a family can often leave couples feeling alone or isolated and stuck, and quality support can sometimes be expensive. 
That's why we're offering you access to all of this at a super low monthly rate. Because every blended family deserves the opportunity to thrive, regardless of their budget. That's right. So join us in the Blending Together community and unlock the secrets to successful blending. Together, we can create a future filled with hope, connection, and peace. But don't wait. Click the link in the show notes now. The doors will be closing on October 8th, and you don't want to miss out on this unique opportunity to create the future you really want alongside other couples who genuinely get it. Mm -hmm. Hey, we can't wait to meet you there. Now, once you've learned to release the pressure from yourself, then you'll need to persevere with a healthy perspective. Mm. Now, as all three of those seasoned stepmoms shared in our interview, they said, you know, we're playing the long game here. That's right. (laughs) And this means that you've got to strategically keep that bigger picture in view. Mm. This isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. Mm -hmm. And you'll need to gently pace yourself as you experience all those bumps in the road that are going to come. That's right. This also means that you might need to let go of any unrealistic expectations or resentment that you might be holding on to. Mm -hmm. Perseverance is the key, but not just gritting your teeth and going into survival mode. Mm -hmm. You've got to persevere with a peaceful spirit and genuine assurance that someday down the road, things will be different. Mm -hmm. Keeping your hope alive is critical to perseverance. And this hopeful perspective is actually going to set you up for the possibility of eventual success in your step relationships. Yeah, that that's so true. And, and you know what? The opposite is also true. Right. If you continue to allow resentment or anger or unrealistic expectations to hold you captive, everyone in your family is going to feel it. And that's going to impact how or if they choose to move toward you. Right. The truth is that lecturing or creating demands or having angry outbursts, that's never really going to provide you with the desired relationship you're looking for. In fact, that's going to flip the script, right? Mm -hmm. All that effort to push your way in will provide your stepkids with a whole lot of reasons to continue rejecting you, and it'll offer them plenty of ammunition to just kind of throw back at you. I don't know about you, but when someone's continually resentful, demanding, or disappointed and upset with me, I don't find it very natural to move toward them. (laughs) I don't have a whole lot of warm, fuzzy feelings about them, right? And this is especially true of emotionally immature kids. They're going to be inclined to do just the opposite, to distance themselves from you if you take a forceful approach. But you might be wondering, well, how do I gain a healthier, peaceful perspective when I'm continually feeling rejected and hurt in my own home? That's a really good question. Yeah, and that is no easy task. Mm -hmm. And we certainly don't want to underestimate or minimize the pain and the frustration Mm -hmm. that comes with being ignored or disrespected and rejected. That's right. You know, I've been there myself, not as a step parent, but with my own daughter, Annika, Mm, during our horrendous season of parental alienation. Yeah. And I can't remember how many times Annika would show up at our house encased in this wall of hostility, Mm. spitting out hurtful things that she seemed to have been coached to repeat over and over during our visitation time. Yeah. So I know the heartache of spending time around a child who is trying very hard to reject you. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I got stuck in this pit of anger and disappointment and resentment. Mm -hmm. But eventually I realized that I needed to get unstuck and Mm. to begin focusing on something other than my pain, disappointment, and resentment. Mm. Yes, the pain of rejection is very real and your frustrations are valid. My frustrations were valid. But the reality is that if you choose to languish there, you probably won't have the capacity to change the dynamics in your home. Mm. You've got to do something different, which is challenging, but it can also lead to something much better in your future. For sure. You know, in the book, uh, Building Love Together in Blended Families, Gary Chapman and Ron Deal devote an entire chapter to helping step parents face rejection. Mm -hmm. They encourage step parents to build their personal resolve. Here's what they have to say. 
Building your personal resolve in the face of rejection is in part raw determination. There's much to be said for not giving up. But another part of resolve is not caring too much about winning the person's heart. Now that sounds counterintuitive, but making the other's affection the object of your resolve gives them far too much power over your personal well-being and chips away at that resolve. Mm. Instead, your resolve to remain faithful must be found in your own sense of worth and identity so that you can separate who you really are from who the rejecting person implies that you are. Mm, That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. What they're saying there is, If your sense of worth, value, and identity as a person is dependent on your stepchild's love and acceptance, then you're actually undermining your own ability to persevere. For sure. Because you're giving all your power away. Mm. Gary and Ron encourage readers to find their sense of worth and identity above and within, Mm -hmm. in their relationship with a higher power and within themselves. That's right. I love this quote from the book. Chasing a child's approval puts you in a position of weakness. (laughs) That's right. And that's really important for us to keep in mind, especially when we're feeling rejected. I like the way another author, Lauren Retzema, says, take back your power. Try not to let the emotional process of a child affect your own confidence or value. Mm. We want to move from succumbing to pressure and instead retain our own personal power, our that sense of security, right? We want to retain that. I love that. Mm-hmm. And Lauren's book, it's called In Their Shoes, is a great resource for anyone living in blended family dynamics. Yeah. Now, Lauren goes on to say this. The negative beliefs, attitudes, and action of stepchildren can have a tremendous power over you. Mm. Rather than giving so much power to the children, work toward letting that go. The behaviors exhibited toward you or sometimes even against you are rarely fair and often painful. Once you understand that as a step parent, Your position affects the children more than your personality does. Mm. Then you can begin to release the pressure you might feel to actively win their favor. Mm. Don't surrender to the children the power over your emotions. Remembering this perspective will help you harness confidence in a position that often feels vulnerable and resented. That's such a powerful quote. And what's powerful for that about me is that Lauren's writing all that from the perspective of a now adult stepchild. Yeah. So she knew what it was like to be a stepchild Mm -hmm. and she's reflecting back on that and going, wow, some of my rejection of my step parents wasn't necessarily about their personality or their personhood. It was about their position and she's recognizing that. So Your kids are on their way to recognizing some of that, just like Lauren did as well. Yeah, the book really is hopeful. Oh, it's powerful, yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of that points to our next strategy that can help step parents persevere when they're feeling rejected. And Mm -hmm. what is that one, honey? Well, that's to learn to take good care of yourself. So when a step parent neglects to start by taking care of their own emotional needs, They set the whole dynamic up for disaster, right? Right. As step parents, we can quickly lose perspective and struggle with our role and our identity. We can easily become overwhelmed and then find ourselves feeling like we've got nothing left to give to ourselves or to our family. Mm -hmm. So taking good care of yourself isn't selfish. It's necessary and it's going to help you to build your personal resolve and to show up well for your spouse and your stepkids, especially when you're facing rejection. One of the most practical ways to take good care of yourself is to simply protect yourself from toxic power struggles with your stepkids. Mm, Don't let yourself get in it. (laughs) Look, there's no winners in a power struggle. There just never is. And a step parent without any real true parental authority who hasn't yet established a full trusting relationship with a stepchild yet is going to be fighting a losing battle when they attempt to claim power or control in a situation where they really genuinely have none. Mm. An easy wrong turn many step parents unknowingly make is to either try to force or simply accept parental authority with a stepchild too quickly. So I'm either trying to grab that power myself 
or I'm willingly taking it from a, an exhausted bio, bio parent, parent who wants to kind yeah. of hand it over. Either way, when it lands in our lap, it can be really detrimental and mm -hmm. it sabotages the relationship and creates deeper levels of resistance from a stepchild. This is this was true in my childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my dad just sort of abdicated. My stepmom took over. She kind of took the reins when it came to parenting long before there was ever trust built. And it created a tremendous amount of tension in the home. And as a result, I never really had that great of a relationship with my stepmom. Now, there were some other things in my story that were more extreme than that. But at the core level, I think if my dad would have remained in the mm -hmm. driver's seat right. and they, if, if they had worked it better together, we probably would have had a radically different result. Yeah, 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 I can see that. Yeah. Anyway. You know, in their book called The Smart Stepmom, Ron Deal and Laura Petherbridge share a story of a stepmom who made this easy wrong term that we're mm. talking about. And she realized how overstepping in her role was making things really tense with her stepson. Mm. Whenever she tried to direct or correct him, he pushed back and resisted her. Now, Ron and Laura offer a strategy for stepmoms to set appropriate boundaries, and they call it politely resign from parental responsibilities that are causing stress in their step relationship. Mm -hmm. What it does is it opens the door for the bio parent to utilize the parental authority they already have with their child and handle all that directing and correcting that needs to be done. Yeah. Now, Stacy, one of the stepmoms that we interviewed back in episode 157, shared how she eventually learned to take a step back with her stepdaughters mm. and how that simple step back actually paved the way for more connection to grow between her and her stepdaughters. That's right. Now, resigning your post as the person in charge of a stepchild is something that can be done in a respectful way without emotionally disengaging from the child or your spouse. Right. And so we're going to put a link in the show notes to that book if you're interested in learning more. And Ron and Laura inc include a great script for how to resign, quote unquote, mm -hmm. in a loving way. And often this strategy will help a bio parent to notice that poor behavior. And it kind of motivates them to start learning how to effectively do the parenting that needs to be done without depending on the step parent to do that. Yeah. yeah. And this, you know, this resigning doesn't mean that you just back out of the family and don't do anything or don't serve <laughs> right. at all. That's not right. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're talking about resigning from, from things that from are the power struggle. Yes. From resigning. the power yeah. struggle, things that are causing stress. Yep. Now there's lots of resources out there for this kind of thing. And one that we've recently come across is a step parenting book from the group at Love and Logic. Mm -hmm. And Love and Logic is a powerful parenting method and in this book, there's some really cool strategies for step parents to take good care of themselves by setting up some healthy boundaries and steering clear of those power struggles with their stepkids. Right. I love the way Charles Fay, the author, says this. The more words we use with an angry or arguing child, the less effective we become. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one for me. I use a lot of words. <laughs> So the first rule of thumb in taking good care of yourself is to know your role and to leave the heavy lifting of discipline up to the bio parent. Mm -hmm. Entering into a power struggle with an angry or arguing stepchild will not only drain your energy and leave you feeling defeated and frustrated, mm. but these negative interactions will do damage in your relationship with your stepchild. You mm -hmm. probably already noticed that. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to be very thoughtful about how to appropriately stay in your lane as a step parent mm -hmm. and to work with your spouse in becoming effective parenting partners. That's right. This is critical, and it's typically one of the biggest challenges that blended family couples face. If you feel like you need some help learning to become effective parenting partners and mm -hmm. some encouragement, we're here for you. Feel free to reach out and schedule a free coaching call with us. We can mm -hmm. help you out there, and we're yep. going to put a link in the show notes to make it really easy for you to do that. That's right. Now, another key to staying out of the power struggle and taking good care of yourself is to set enforceable limits with your stepkids when needed. Just because you aren't taking authority or disciplining doesn't mean you can't set up appropriate limits so that you don't get walked all over. 
right? But right. to do this, a shift in your approach might be what's required. Mm -hmm. When most of us want a child to do something, we tend to jump straight to instruction. We want to tell them what we need them to do. Johnny, you need to pick up your dirty clothes and put them in the hamper. To which a stepchild might say, you're not my dad. I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> right? You're not the boss of me, right? Which will inevitably lead us to a power struggle that you likely won't win. Because in all reality, they're right. <laughs> and you really can't make them or force them to do much of anything as a step parent. So instead of telling them what they need to do, Try to stay focused on what you will do. I'll only be washing the clothes that are in the hamper. That's a great way to mm -hmm. respond to a kid. That That's setting at this enforceable limit. And you grab the hamper in the weekday when laundry's going and whatever's in it, wash it. Great. Right. <laughs> right? Yep. You really have to follow through with what you've said you will or you won't do. Right. That's when it really becomes an enforceable limit. And it works because it focuses on what you're going to do, not on what the child will or won't do. So it actually eliminates the power struggle. Right. You know, a step parent who doesn't yet have the authority to enforce a limit, like put your clothes in the hamper, can still set a limit mm -hmm. and take good care of themselves by letting their stepchild know which clothes they'll be washing. That's right? right. And the best part about an enforceable limit is that now the ball is in the child's court. Mm. They can choose to put their clothes in the hamper and be blessed with clean clothes to wear, mm. or they can choose to leave clothes all over the floor and as a result, end up without any clean clothes to wear. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And a step parent can set enforceable limits around lots of things, but the key is to stay calm and deliver the limit with a pleasant attitude and a warm demeanor. Right. And when the child later complains about not having any clean clothes to wear, you can give lots of empathy and say, oh man, I know that's a bummer. It must've been really upsetting for you to have to wear dirty clothes. Hopefully all your clothes are going to make it in the hamper this week. So we won't have to go through that again. Right. And right? move on. <laughs> yeah. We, we've got to communicate that in an empathetic way, not a snarky, rude, I told you so tone. Mm -mm. We want to avoid getting defensive because of a defensive response is going to lead you and your stepchild right back into a power struggle over who's right and who's wrong. And it really doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. What we want to do is be setting enforceable limits. So. What we want to keep in mind here is that you might have to have a mindset shift around a few things. Right. Because it's pretty tough for most of us as stepdads or stepmoms to allow mm -hmm. a few weeks of a kid wearing dirty clothes. Yeah. Like they stink and we think about how that reflects on our parenting and what's going on in our home and all of that. However, if we can push through those two or three mm -hmm. weeks of them dealing with it, most kids We'll start to get the idea. Yeah, we're looking for long-term habit change, and exactly. they're not going to change if they don't experience a little bit of pain. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't either. <laughs> pain, pain teaches. Exactly. Yeah. Now, of course, good self-care is crucial for every step parent. Mm -hmm. Step parents need healthy breaks from a stepchild who's having a hard time accepting them. Right. Now, this is not for the purpose of distancing themselves from the family, mm -hmm. but simply to have the space to recharge their batteries and do something that feeds their soul. Mm -hmm. Right. It might be quality time with a friend or pursuing a hobby, or mm. finding a special place to just relax and do something enjoyable for a few hours. Step That's parents right. need that. Yeah. And whatever it might look like for you, schedule it strategically and collaborate with your spouse about taking that mm. time. The focus is to maintain a healthy self-care routine so that you can get rejuvenated and show up well for your family. Again, not to separate yourself or create distance in any of the relationships in your home. So you've got to be collaborative with your spouse right. and really work on the strategy behind it. So we want to remove the pressure to force those connections. We want to take good care of ourselves in order to show up well for others Honey, what's the third practical step for step parents who might be struggling? The third one is to continually invest in your marriage, mm -hmm. even when you're hurting. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Often we see a hurting step parent blaming their spouse for the challenging dynamics in their home mm. or in their pain. They move to protect themselves by shutting down and isolating from their spouse. Yeah. 
And although this might make sense in light of their pain and any conflict that's been going on in their relationship, these kind of responses only end up magnifying the problem. Mm -hmm. And here's why. First, when there's tension and conflict between the adults, the children will take note and they yeah. will react. Of course. Yeah. Usually they'll react by strengthening their resolve to reject the step parent. Mm. Because why would a child be motivated to move towards someone that may not be around for the long haul? Mm. When kids experience turbulence in your relationship, this naturally leads to a sense of instability in the home. Yeah. And you know, the truth is kids whose parents have divorced, they know all too well about how a marital relationship can fall apart and how families split. They've mm -hmm. already been through it. If mom and dad had a bunch of conflict prior to their breakup, then it makes sense for kids to start bracing themselves for another breakup when they notice tension and conflict in your relationship and yeah. that creates instability. Yeah, that's right. Your relationship is really the foundation of the home and it's going to impact how the children are able to relate to the step parent. Mm -hmm. You know, kids typically side with their bio parent no matter what. Yep. So when the marriage is stressed, the kids are naturally going to move further from the step parent and toward the bio parent. Mm -hmm. But here's the good news. The opposite's also true. So when kids see that the adults are working on the health of their relationship and they witness them making some positive investments into each other, the kids will tend to gradually become more open to accepting the step parent. It actually creates an environment mm -hmm. that allows some bonds to emerge. Right. And we hear this over and over from seasoned blended family couples. When the kids finally realized our relationship was going to stick, <laughs> they started to come around and began to embrace the step parent just a little more. Yeah, that was a theme that came from our interview with our three seasoned stepmoms That's who right. all said how their stepkids attitudes and behaviors towards them changed when they saw that their marital commitment care and devotion to each other was Secure. solid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if you do blame your spouse for the pain that you're experiencing, and mm -hmm. you know, sometimes there are some valid reasons for that. Yep. It's still best for you to find ways to continually invest in your relationship. You need yeah. to muster up the energy to do that. Mm -hmm. Find healthy ways to communicate about your pain and work through your issues. It's absolutely necessary if you want to sure. make it for the long haul. Yeah. And like we've mentioned before, and lots of times we mentioned on here on the show is building a united partnership around parenting. It's one of the most important and one of the most challenging aspects of blending, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. And we've helped a lot of couples to become successful parenting partners right. together. Even couples who found themselves entangled in a lot of painful emotions and patterns of conflict. Yeah, this is a skill set that anyone can learn. Any couple can learn this. Right. Here's another great quote from Lauren Retzema's book. She says, a healthy marriage does not happen because of magical chemistry. <laughs> it requires a selfless, sacrificial, surrendered posture. Mm. In addition to this, marriage requires that couples develop a skill set to navigate conflict and communication effectively. Yeah. And, you know, we believe that it's never too late to invest in the health of your relationship and learn new skills that really yeah. can change the dynamics in your home yep. and open the door for step relationships to grow and flourish. Absolutely. In fact, research has shown that relational ties between step family members correlates with the couple's relationship. Mm -hmm. It's critical that you get united as a couple and that you work together through the problems that you're facing. We'll put a link in the show notes to episode 63. And in that, we offer five strategies to help you get united, even when you disagree, so that you can get started today. You today. can just hop right over to that mm -hmm. episode when you're done here. But we also encourage you to reach out to us and schedule a free coaching call if you're feeling really stuck as a couple and you'd like some help to get united. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've talked about removing that pressure and persevering with a healthy perspective, taking good care of yourself as a step parent. And continually investing in your marriage. Right. So what else can a step parent do when they're feeling hurt and rejected? Well, this might sound emotionally counterintuitive, but 
We've mentioned empathy quite a few times already, and this is one of the most important traits for a step parent to develop. And I know how hard it can be to look at a child through the lens of empathy and care when they're treating you poorly and causing you so much pain. I, I get it. Yeah, it really is challenging for most step parents to have empathy in these difficult dynamics. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to look below the surface of your daily interactions and gain some insight and understanding around why this child might be acting in this way, mm. then it's easier to do this next strategy, which is to rise above the difficulty and show up differently. Yeah. You can respond in a calm, strategic way that will make positive deposits into your relationship with your stepchild rather than reacting in a way that ramps up the negativity between you. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's so easy for a step parent and stepchild to get stuck in some of those toxic patterns of interaction we talked about. I, I know that. I've been there with Annika before. The child maybe says or does something that we don't approve of or that makes us feel angry, disrespected, or rejected. And then we get triggered. And then we react, often without even thinking. We might spout off an immediate correction or deliver a negative comment in a really negative way. Maybe we get aggressive in our response, or maybe some of us just get more passive and we walk away in a huff, shut down, slam the door, or give them the silent treatment. Maybe our reaction is more passive aggressive as well, but we sometimes react in ways that just simply aren't helpful. Somehow, somewhere along the way, chances are you've done one of those things. Right. I, I'm the first one to raise my hand. I've done probably all of those things, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to slide into those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the reality is when step relationships get stuck in these negative patterns, there are two powerful things at play. Mm. First, the child's emotions and the step parents' emotions. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> We're now both emotionally charged. That's right. So, you know, the child, they might be really grumpy or upset about something. It could be something painful, even that happened at school or in their friend group, nothing to do with the step parent when they say or do that thing mm. that triggers the step parent. Yep. Right. And then the step parents' emotions tend to take over and they react in a way that adds to the child's frustration and now mm -hmm. triggers their emotions. So they say or do something else really negative. Yep. Then the step parent reacts to that with more negativity and mm -hmm. round and round and round we go. Yeah. This toxic pattern is continually fed with negative interactions and the relationship, it continues to suffer. And it spirals downward. That's not what we want. You describe all that as if you've seen it happen before. Like. <laughs> I've had front row seat. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. And, and the truth is that's actually the opposite of what we all want. Mm -hmm. I know step parents listening have such a heart for their step yes. kids and they want good things, but we get stuck in these emotions that just keep us going round and round and end up leaving us right where we don't want to be. The truth is we want the relationship to turn around and to improve, but unfortunately, a step-parent who isn't able to rise above the difficulty in the moment and regulate their own emotions, they're typically going to sabotage themselves unintentionally, mm -hmm. and then the result is pain and distance in the relationship with the stepchild because they aren't able to show up differently, you right. know, with empathy and, and in a calm way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the toxic pattern and negativity just keeps getting charged and it continues and not much changes. And then we just feel stuck. So if you want positive change in your relationship with your stepchild, then you've got to decide, decide to break free from this toxic pattern of interaction. And the truth is, it's up to you as the adult to show up differently. Mm -hmm. Ron Deal says, you cannot make a child love you. But it is your responsibility to be someone they would want to love. Mm -hmm. That reality right there is so important for a step parent to remember when they're tempted to react emotionally when their stepchild is having a hard time. Yeah. Your reaction in those tough moments will make a difference, mm -hmm. either a positive or a negative difference. Mm. And in that moment, you have an opportunity to choose what kind of difference you're going to make in your relationship with that child. Yeah, you know, if you're waiting around for your stepchild to suddenly change their behavior or how they interact with you, 
you're probably going to be waiting a really, really, really long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the relational damage actually might be unrepairable. Yeah. It's unrealistic to expect a child to manage their emotions well. I got to tell you, if, if a kid's under 25, their brain isn't even fully developed yet. So they don't yet have the capacity and ability to easily recognize when they're emotionally dysregulated let alone the capacity to manage those difficult emotions Mm -hmm. if they were to recognize it. They just feel something and they tend to react. And that is pretty normal for most kids. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But as the adults, we can't use that excuse. That's right. (laughs) Unless you're under 25. (laughs) (laughs) Most of us have a fully developed brain. (laughs) (laughs) And we actually are capable of recognizing our emotions and those Mm. tough moments and regulating ourselves and then responding rather than reacting yeah. when, when it gets tough, right? That's right. But often we don't. Mm. Instead, we get triggered, we feel pain, and we allow ourselves to react negatively, mm-hmm. stay stuck in those patterns, and the damage is done. And, and the truth is kids take their cues from us. So we've got to set some really good cues. What if we could change all those reactions Kim just described and break out of that toxic cycle of interaction with a stepchild and set a new cue that would set them up for success just like it set us up for success, regardless of how the child behaves? Right. right? This is up to us. we got to get out of that Mm -hmm. whole thing. I'm confident that doing that is going to help your relationship move in a different direction toward something better. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you've tuned into this episode, hoping that we've got some kind of magic formula to get your stepchild (laughs) to suddenly change, Mm. we're really sorry to disappoint you. Mm -hmm. But that magic formula, it just doesn't exist. That's right. We're here to help you understand that a more effective approach is to change your approach to these dynamics. Mm. This is what will eventually lead to positive change in your relationship. For sure. So if you've been struggling with these unhealthy, toxic patterns of interactions and your stepchild tends to trigger your emotions or push your buttons, and when that happens, you have a hard time managing your own emotions and showing up well, you know what? You aren't alone. Yeah, absolutely. I've personally struggled with that for many years with Annika, my stepdaughter, and we've coached lots of step parents over the years to use an effective tool called Relate Strong. Now, we often teach that to couples so that they can show up better in their relationship as a couple and communicate well. Mm -hmm. But what I've found is that this tool works for step relationships, too, or really any difficult relationship where I tend to become emotionally dysregulated and reactive. Right. And so if you want to learn a little bit more about Relate Strong, just click on the link in the show notes to schedule that free coaching call we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And one final thought. I just want to remind you that looking through the lens of empathy is so important, but often pain tends to trump empathy Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that makes it difficult to truly understand what's below the surface. It's easy for us to wonder, why is this child giving me such a hard time? Mm. But it's more productive to change that to Why might this child be having a hard time? Mm. If you can do that, if you can avoid taking things so personally, and I know it's hard, but when we're able to put our own pain aside and get curious about what might be going on under the surface, then we're positioned to approach any difficult interaction with more empathy and a softer heart. That's right. And that's how you can begin to connect more with a resistant stepchild Mm -hmm. with a curiosity mindset and genuine empathy. Absolutely. And again, this isn't easy. That's not what we're saying. Expert Ron Deal says that love and faithfulness are critical to growing and sustaining healthy relationships. Rejection requires faithfulness in order to overcome what is behind the rejection. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He goes on to say that in the face of opposition, Continuing to love sends a powerful message that ultimately is hard to deny. Mm. So if we just keep showing up in a loving way, it's really hard for that rejection to be persistent in the long haul. Right. Right. The path through rejection is faithful, tenacious love. 
And you're more likely to show up in a loving way when you're able to see your stepchild through the lens of empathy. So take the time to understand what might be behind your stepchild's rejection. The benefits of that's twofold. You're going to develop the ability to meet your stepchild where they are and care for them without pressure or expectation. You'll be better equipped to move yourself from pain to empathy. And if you'd like to dive into understanding your stepchild's perspectives and gain more empathy and insight, we encourage you to check out the episodes we've got under the topic of kids' perspectives. We currently have 20 episodes on this topic, and we'll put a link in the show notes for those, as well as several excellent books that can help you with this, including Lauren Retzema's book. Mm -hmm. So we've given you a lot to think about today. We've talked about how you might strategically remove the pressure, persevere with a healthy perspective, take good care of yourself, continually invest in your marriage, rise above the difficulty, and show up differently looking through the lens of empathy. These are all great things to consider, but like one of our friends Mark Warren says, learning changes your thinking, but practice changes your life. And so we want to challenge you to do a little practicing. Mm -hmm. We want you to choose just one of these things that we've discussed and get focused there. Maybe you'll give yourself a break from the pressure and take some steps to persevere with peace by building your own personal resolve that isn't dependent on your stepchild's acceptance. Right. You're going to find that healthy perspective. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you really need to take better care of yourself by setting a few of those enforceable limits and Mm. boundaries And then staying out of those damaging power struggles. Or maybe you realize that you and your spouse could use some practical support around resolving conflict in a healthy way or with strengthening your parenting partnership and you're ready to make an investment in your marriage. Mm. Or it might be that you'd like to grow in managing your own emotions so that you can rise above the difficulty and show up differently Mm. And maybe you'll get more information about our Relate Strong program so you can learn to do that. Or you might decide to focus on understanding your stepchild's unique perspectives so that you can clearly see them through a lens of empathy and stay the course as you faithfully love and care for them, even in the face of rejection. Right. So we encourage you, hold on to hope. Mm -hmm. Don't give up and choose just one of these strategies to dive deeper and really focus on them and then practice, practice, practice. Discover how these strategies can positively impact your relationship with your stepchild and ultimately change your life. Mm -hmm. It's not a magic formula to fix the child. Mm. It's a practical strategy you can do to gradually make a difference in your home. Yep. And we'll leave you with a quote from Albert Einstein. Hmm. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. That's right. The tough reality is that blended family dynamics will naturally create some painful problems. Mm. You can either stay stuck in those problems or you can use some new thinking to move toward healthy, effective solutions. It's really a choice and it's yours to make. Hey, we hope that you really take today's challenge seriously Mm -hmm. and choose just one thing to focus on to get you started. Check out the helpful resources that we've got for you in the show notes. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. All right. We hope that that was all helpful and we're going to make this episode a wrap. Until next time. Until next time.